thank you everybody for joining us today. Um, we know that uh, the coronavirus has uh, created some new constraints <coughs> and some new opportunities for us, so we hope you enjoyed today's uh, discussion. Um, I want to welcome Professor Lee with uh, Kyungi University. Professor Lee, would you mind uh, just taking a moment and introducing yourself uh, for our Asia Society uh, members? Okay, hello. Uh, my name is Kyung Jun Lee. Uh, I'm from the business school of Kyungi University. I have been working on the artificial intelligence application for business and also the business models for those uh, incumbent and startup companies. Terrific, thank you. Um, and for those of you that don't recognize me, my name is Scott Arantia. Uh, I'm a program committee member here with the Asia Society Korea and have been working with Yvonne for a number of years uh, supporting the various activities that uh, Asia Society Korea um, partakes in. So, I'm really honored to, to be here today uh, to um, uh, really have some interesting discussions with Professor Lee. Today we're going to talk a little bit about artificial intelligence. Um, and so Professor Lee, mm -hmm. uh, some of our members might only have a very uh, simple uh, understanding of what artificial intelligence is. Uh, could you just take a few minutes and talk about kind of the overall uh, underlying pillars and philosophies of artificial intelligence? Yes. Uh, actually, I've been working on the artificial intelligence for more than 20 years. But recently, the, the word artificial intelligence has become popular. Uh, although the, uh, it became now very popular, but there are still much misunderstanding on the artificial intelligence. So many people think, uh, even some experts say that AI is something mimicking or replacing human beings and AI can be a very threatening entity in our world but uh, AI researchers and AI scholars and the real AI experts do not think like that. So AI is just a discipline uh, making systems function in, functioning intelligently. So the intelligently, the intelligence means the behaving or functioning appropriately. So AI is just a discipline making systems functioning very appropriately. Yeah. So, so can you give us maybe one or two examples mm -hmm. of how AI is being um, utilized in today's economy in, a, in an industry or a field that we might be very familiar with as a, you know, a, an everyday consumer? Yeah, f most simple uh, example is the Facebook or Google. So Facebook uh, advertisement mm -hmm. is operated by the artificial intelligence. Also, Google's um, many operations are being done by uh, AI systems. And you know, the Wall Street, uh, the financial industry, many investment firms are using AI algorithms to make money. And, it, and I have applied the AI technology for the shipbuilding company and the construction company. And recently, I have been working on the quality management of the small and medium manufacturer in Korea uh, for their finding the defects automatically using so-called convolutional neural network. So nowadays, many uh, industry uh, are using the artificial intelligence techniques. Very good, very good. Um, it also seems like there may be a little bit of a, a paradox in our business community. Mm -hmm. um, I know for the past five to ten years, um, a lot of uh, business leaders have been trying to uh, reduce bureaucracy, to um, be a little more democratic in their decision-making processes, and pushing the decision-making to kind of the functional execution teams of a company. Um, at the same time, uh, that same group of uh, business leaders seem to want to integrate and utilize artificial intelligence um, a, a little bit more in their business practices. 
But I think, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think artificial intelligence tends to be a little more rigid and prescriptive in how uh, it does its predictive learning. So how can uh, something that's a little more rigid and, and, and bureaucratic work and integrate with an environment that is trying to move to a little bit more less bureaucratic, uh, you know, giving the, the guy at the lower levels of the organization the ability to make decisions. Yeah, I think also the perception is also from um, misunderstanding on the AI. I think the really good AI systems should be flexible. Uh, good AI system cannot be rigid because, you know, the intelligence means actually adaptation. So we, we say that an entity is intelligent if it is adapting to the environment. So even in the business environment, the, the good AI systems should be adaptive and flexible to the business policy and the context and the environment. So the really good AI system should be implemented, which can do flexibly in very complex business environment. So, you know, the AI system, or we call sometimes AI systems machine learning systems. So machine learning systems learns automatically uh, by data streaming, stream from the complex business environment. So the really good AI system should be flexible. So how, how can, uh, in, in very you know, complex or critical situations, how can um, AI and human judgment work together? Mm -hmm. um, and, and try, if you can, to give us some examples of how that might um, you know, work in a, in a real life uh, situation. Yeah, I think it is very good. Uh, it issues for the AI and human. For example, uh, the Boeing 730 7 accident, mm -hmm. uh, it, is the, it shows that the human's over-reliance on the automated system. So if a human has some automated system, sure he is more and more relying on the automated system. So the, the pilot is, has been too much depending on the automated system. So if it comes some critical situation, it cannot, the, it, it cannot mm -hmm. uh, deal with that critical situation. So the automated system should be designed to cooperate with human. Sure. Yeah. Sure. I think in the situation that you're talking about, if there's a conflict, uh, then human judgment needs to be able to step in and and essentially take over for maybe in the situation of the Boeings, uh, they would be able to take over control of the plane instead of allowing the AI to continue to control the plane. Yes. Uh, such a, an issue is very long. Uh, research issues of artificial intelligence. So it is called human AI mixed initiative system. So the really good AI system should be mixed initiative uh, between the human and AI. So human can give an order to the AI, then, then AI can make suggestion, and the human can uh, decide among the the given uh, alternatives. So we need to develop the very flexible and human and AI mixed initiative collaboration systems. So, and I'm, I'm not an AI expert here, mm -hmm. but is there an ability to create an AI system? I, I know there's predictive learning involved, but you're saying we need to be able to interact with human judgment and AI together, can you program into AI the ability for the AI system to make choices or listen to 
its human counterpart in a decision making process? Actually, this is the ideal, we are ideal of our uh, research and development, but in reality, it is not. For example, the current the Tesla autopilot system, uh, we had some, some victims of the, the misuse of the autopilot system of Tesla because it is not fully automated, but the human is more and more becoming relying, relying on the Tesla's autopilot. Mm -hmm. So sometimes humans are sleeping on the driver's seat, but it is not made like that. So, and the AI system and the machine learning system have a misfortune to make an error because so on the other hand, the traditional engineering system is more robust because the traditional engineering assumes that the system, the machine, can operate by, only by human order. Right. But the AI system or machine learning system is de designed to behave from the autonomous learning. So it can make an error. So Actually, I, I have told that the fully automated self-driving car will not be possible in the near future. So, for example, the MIT professor David Mindel, he wrote a book, uh, Our Robots and Ourselves. He also claimed that the, there will be no fully autonomous system in the future. Every system should be directed by human and collaborate with human. But many people misunderstand the AI systems and technology. So in the meantime, we can make some big teams, big teams and yes. yeah. So, so part of learning is trial and error. Yeah. And so it sounds like what you're saying is that on the pathway to fully autonomous, uh, we will have some, some errors along the way in order for the system to learn. Yeah, so we don't imagine, we should not imagine the fully automated systems. We should think the human AI mixed system and human AI collaborate system because the AI system always make, an, make a mistake, it can make an error. So the human should take responsibility of the result from the AI system. So many people think that the automation will replace human and will dominate human, <laughs> but it is a kind of fairy tale, I think. Okay. Well, for I have a little challenge for you. So uh, as you well know, uh, the COVID-19 crisis has <clears throat> fairly, fairly disrupted um, you know, life as we've known it, uh, and it's overwhelming our healthcare system and has put a great strain on our economic systems globally. Um, how do you think AI could be a partial solution to what will become our new normal post uh, COVID-19? Yeah, already AI researchers are contributing to make the antibiotics or vaccines of COVID-19. Uh, even Google already announced that they, their researchers are now making efforts for making the kind of medicine. So AI's real use is for that kind of purpose. So AI is, AI is a very powerful optimization technique. So for the making of medicines, we need some kind of optimization or we should find the very optimal combination of chemicals. So, for example, the DeepMind, the subsidiary of Google Alphabet, the, the UK company, DeepMind also made the so-called AlphaFold to make the synthesis of the protein. Uh, so, the powerful AI technique will contribute to make making the 
antibiotics and the vaccines of the future viruses. Uh, and so I, I think it is a very good application area of AI. Yeah. So <clears throat> we also might find that how we organize work will change because of this virus. Uh, social distancing, um, the need to maybe do um, uh, telecommuting or work as a team in different geographic locations. Do you see AI being able to help facilitate um, new constraints to organizing people and teams around work? Um, I think, uh, I think uh, in short time or long time, we will overcome this crisis. Uh, so we will make vaccines and we will make antibiotics for COVID-19 or any other future viruses. Because our human can adapt yes. to the new environment and, and can overcome the new threat. But from the AI perspective, I'd uh, like to talk about the digital me uh, systems. So nowadays, China and U United States are competing very fiercely uh, on the area of digital me or quantified me, quantified self. Uh, it is kind of healthcare system uh, for every individual. So the AI system gather the human's data and they predict the health status of every individual and they give the prescription or the healthcare service for the kind of individual. So for example, in China, the iCarbonX is the, the company's most advanced company in this area. So last year, the, the Chinese company acquired the, almost acquired the United States company, the patient like me, but the Trump administration uh, advised that company to cancel the investment. So the new, another United States company, the United Health, acquired the company instead of the Chinese company. So the digital me of health services is now very important area. So I think maybe in 10 years, the trustable AI companies will care every individual's health status. And so maybe this Corona or COVID-19 uh, crisis will expide expedite the kind of healthcare services in worldwide. Mm. Uh, a moment ago, you, you mentioned uh, a potential investment or merger that was stopped by uh, President Trump. Um, that kind of brings up uh, a thought about um, how do we uh, see politics and um, geopolitical issues infusing themselves into AI. And um, let, me, let me be a little more specific. How do we deal with ethics and morality um, and, and AI? Um, and I know that different countries uh, and different political regimes have a different uh, view of what is ethical and what is moral, but still, ethics and morality, how does that mix into the AI formula? Yeah, it is very com uh, complicated issue. For example, in China, now the facial recognition technology uh, applied every area of China these days. So there are many good companies in facial recognition technology, and but many people are worried about <laughs> the privacy issue and the, and so, but in free democratic society like Korea and Japan and United States, uh, that kind of facial recognition technology is 
constrained by the law and by the, the uh, civil society. So nowadays, the AI technology are apply, being applied depending on the uh, governance systems and, and the, uh, the democratic systems. So these days, many researchers are working on the AI and data governance. Uh, so what, ca what is the uh, fair application of artificial intelligence? And what is the uh, principles of the applying AI to the society? Well, and I think earlier you, you mentioned uh, that AI ultimately still needs to be uh, controlled or directed by humans. Um, and I know there's a lot of folks out there that might have some anxiety or fear that the use of AI um, may displace workers, workers that maybe um, have a less um, uh, advanced uh, education um, may be replaced by automation and AI. Um, and that fear and anxiety may um, have an impact on how a government may set rules and regulations for AI. Can you spend just a little time uh, speaking a little bit more about how AI and human interactivity can um, work well together so that people can be less afraid that uh, AI may displace um, you know, workers in our, in our economy? Yeah, in my opinion, the, the fear and the, the anxiety also comes from the misunderstanding on the artificial intelligence yes. and even on the automation technology. Let me ask you a question. Sure. Yeah. With the invention of a camera, the painters lose their job or not? No. In fact, I think we have a better appreciation for painters. <laughs> I, I read the history of photography. So I was very surprised to see that with, with the invention of camera, painters made more, much money before, than before. Because the painters changed their jobs to the photographers. <laughs> So as a painter, they can solve only one or two, one or several persons per day. But as a photographer, they can take pictures of many people, many customers. So from the book of the history of photography, I learned that the automation technology make people rich, actually. Uh, so from the invention of camera, we made painters rich, and we, we saw the film industry, camera industry, and the magazine industry, and video. Even nowadays, Facebook, Instagram, also based on the, actually the camera technology. Mm -hmm. Many people take a picture, and they upload their pictures to the Facebook or Instagram. So the, the automation technology, the, the photography, creates many, many kinds of industries and value and jobs and money. Car industry also another example. Coachmen, many people think that with the, the invention of cars, the coachmen lost their job. I don't think so. Coachman became the car driver. It's much easier to take care of the cars than the horses. So, and you know, the car industry and the transportation industry and tourism industry, many kinds of industries are created by the invention of cars and, and, and the emergence of car industry. So I think that the new automation technology that the AI, artificial intelligence, will create much job and new kinds of industry and new kinds of value. 
we cannot imagine. If I can imagine, I will be rich. I will make a startup. If we see the future made by artificial intelligence, we will we will start up. We'll make start a new company. So I think this is a kind of interim misunderstanding on artificial intelligence. So, so let me ask you this question then. It sounds to me like you're very optimistic about the future of AI. Uh, it sounds to me like you believe AI, AI is a, a tool for our society to be more productive. Yep. Um, how can we increase our general knowledge of AI and how can we increase our leaders, our political leaders and our business leaders dialogue about AI so that we can uh, hopefully relieve some of the anxiety that many people do have. I think, as you said, um, out of the fact that they simply don't know and so people have fear out of the unknown. What can we do um, here in Korea or anywhere in the on the globe? What can we do to increase that dialogue so that we can embrace AI as an opportunity for our future? Yeah. I have a very inter interesting experience. Three years ago, uh, in 2017, OECD people came to Korea around uh, October to talk about AI. From the, the OECD report, I found that they, their understanding on AI is very bad. So I talked to them, your understanding on AI is very much wrong. They are very surprised. <laughs> but from that moment, OECD's definition on AI changed, actually. So their definition on AI, of AI in 2018 change it and their 2019 definition of AI is now more and more rational today I, as I explained today. So OECD is now, OECD is thinking on AI has much been changed. So I think that now already OECD is very right in AI direction. I think so many other political leaders will have much more rational and scientific and good understanding on artificial intelligence so I th yeah many misunderstandings now more and more uh, disappear okay <laughs> so I'm very also very much optimistic from my experience so I have kind of one final question, um, and I want to bring it back to um, our Asia Society Korea uh, members. Um, what can we as, a, as a, an organization, uh, in your mind, what can we do to help uh, communicate the right messages about AI um, so that we can help you and help those that are uh, advocates um, and also uh, technical leaders in AI, what can we do to help uh, increase people's awareness about AI? Yeah, we need a, ki uh, a kind of uh, orthodox ed education. So, uh, rather than depending on the uh, mass media or some uh, films or dramas <laughs> about AI, it has much misunderstanding on AI. So. We need to have some good education on artificial intelligence. And f the most important thing is to have some experience on AI. So if we practice AI, it is very easy, actually. It is like using Excel. So there are still many people do not, don't use Excel. But some people use Excel, and they feel very much good productivity. So if we have some experience in dealing with AI in our everyday practice, then we can have more and more understanding, right understanding on artificial intelligence. So I think we need to make 
more hands hands on knowledge on the artificial intelligence, not just the prospect future scenario and the the imagination, something like that. So, uh, I would like to ask you a favor. Uh, being that I'm on the uh, program planning committee for Asia Society, would it be okay if at some point in the future I give you a phone call and you help me to come up with some kind of activity that our members can uh, partake in in one of our luncheons uh, so that they can get the real essence of AI? Yeah, of course. Okay, Thank good, you. good. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I want to thank you so much for uh, coming here today and spending some time with us. I know we would love to have been able to do this with a room full of people over a nice meal and a lot of questions and answers, but uh, unfortunately we couldn't do that. But thank you, thank you so much for, for being here today. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.